Hi, Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, and here's another interview in my series of interviews with subscribers. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. It's Stephen here with another interview with another fine quilter. This one, you may not know her, but you may have seen her viral video, because it did go viral, about using Elmer's school glue to baste your quilt. Yes, and if you have not seen that video, you will need to go to Miriam Roney. It is Roney. Is that how I say your last name, Miriam? It's Ronnie. Ronnie, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Miriam Ronnie's uh, web page, which or not web page, but YouTube channel, which we're going to come to and talk about uh, during this course of this interview. And uh, check that out, plus her other videos. But before you guys go off in search of Miriam, Let's talk to Miriam. And the first question I have for you is, where are you located? I am located in, I like to joke that I'm located in the middle of a cornfield in Missouri, because that's basically <laughs> the truth. I live in a rural, rural area of Missouri. And yeah, I've lived here for about eight years now. I originally was from uh, Minnesota. Okay. So kind of country girl at heart, then I'd say. I guess so yes yeah <laughs> and uh so how long have you been quilting because you're young <laughs> yes. And, and yes usually no offense to my viewers but most of the female quilters all the males too are elderly people senior citizens I don't want to say old ladies <laughs> kind of <thing. laughs> and you're definitely not a senior citizen <laughs> yes yeah um so I started quilting about when I moved here to Missouri um, I had noticed that quilting was a huge deal here and pretty much everybody's grandma, like you said, everybody's <laughs> grandma is a quilter. And I just thought the art form was beautiful. I've always been kind of a creative person and lean towards trying creative things. And I thought, why not try quilting? And I sure. just picked it up there. <laughs> yep. And uh, well, it's nice to see somebody that's a younger person into it because, you know, us old fogies are going to die out and this could become a dying art. We need new new blood to keep it right. going, you know, and there mm -hmm. has been an upsurge in the popularity of quilting, especially during COVID and everything. People wanted something to do and hopefully the momentum will stay <laughs> strong and it'll grow from there. So how did you get started then? So I just, I just decided that I wanted to learn how to quilt, you know, um, my only other experience with sewing was in my seventh grade home ec class. And that was a disaster. It, it was awful. I couldn't even sew a straight line. So that was kind of my, um, my first goal was to just be able to figure out how to sew a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> so I just kind of dove in head first and got some flannel fabric and cut rectangles, sewed them together. And I was hooked. The quilt does not look great. I still have it. <laughs> but, you know, I was just like, this is the coolest thing ever. I just turned a little pile of fabric into a quilt, a blanket. And I was very, very excited. And I just, I have been hooked ever since. <laughs> well, it's funny because you said about uh, taking, um, taking sewing in school and I've heard a lot of people say that they had taken like what we used to call in my day home ec and yes. they learned how to sew cook do all the all the traditional stereotypical female things and I, I mentioned that it's stereotypical because I wanted to take home ec when I was in school and I couldn't because I was male and they would mm -hmm. not allow a male in a home ec class. You know, I had to take woodworking. And that was a complete disaster for me. I mean, <laughs> I started out making a jewelry box. It ended up as a wooden bowl with holes in the bottom. Never held anything. So, yeah. So sort of like sewing a straight line, you know, nobody can. But right. I've heard so many quilters that I have interviewed say that that's how they got started. They took it in school and they sucked at it really bad. Well, you know, just because you couldn't do it in school doesn't mean you can't do it later on, as you have proven with what you've said. And you started with flannel. My <laughs> goodness, you were brave. <laughs> with 
I had I'm, no idea what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but you want to know something? Sometimes that's the best thing. Go in fearless, you know, mm -hmm. don't right. let it just try it and see what happens out of it all. And uh, <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like uh, obviously it didn't have, you didn't have a, a negative enough experience that put you off the idea of quilting. So did anyone in your family quilt? Did anybody influence you in your family? No, um, I don't, I can't think of really anybody that is a big sewer. I have a couple of aunts that I know sew once in a while, but there was no influence. There wasn't anybody that, <laughs> that showed me how to do anything. You know, I was just kind of figuring things out on my own watching YouTube videos, reading blog right. posts, that sort of thing. Um, so, but my dad is a uh, cabinet maker by trade. Hmm. And I kind of could see the similarities between quilting and cabinet making. It's funny you mentioned your workshop, but because, um, you know, he has to measure and cut things and then screw them together instead of sewing them together. So and I've always hung around him when he's building stuff. So I think that kind of helped me in a way with the um, kind of like the precision part of quilting. You know, you have to be precise. But um, yeah, I guess he's probably my biggest influence. And he didn't. Really well, you sell. know, there is a lot of, of uh, people don't think of it immediately, but there is a lot of connection between other forms of crafts where you're actually constructing things because that's what we're doing that's what you said we are constructing a quilt unlike mm -hmm. maybe some other forms of sewing yes we have to be very very precise and you do and like your father's with his woodworking he had to you know measure once cut or measure twice cut once kind of mm -hmm. a thing i should follow that advice i don't and that gets me into trouble <laughs> all the time but yeah there's a lot of math involved in quilting too so yes it is yeah. a very precise thing and that carries over from other crafts as well so do you have a favorite creation now it's an unfair question because usually what people say is my favorite creation is whatever i'm working on right now <laughs> right yeah the last thing i finished yeah um i don't know if i have an actual favorite I've had, I have a couple of baby quilts that I've made in the past. Um, before I kind of started the whole YouTube thing, I had an Etsy shop where I would make custom quilts. So I had a couple of baby quilts that were super fun and really pushed my creativity. I had to draw stuff and do applique and different things. So I made like a giant um, Kermit the Frog mm. quilt. It's like a giant Kermit the Frog head. <laughs> And another one uh, was a uh, quilt inspired by the Disney movie Up. So I had the little house and the balloons and stuff. So those were just really fun because I was really able to kind of push my creativity because I am not a drawer at all, but I had to draw pieces and that was really fun. So I guess those, but I'm <laughs> I have like a lot of other stuff that I've made too, so. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. It is a hard question. I'm quite aware of that. If you were to ask me that question, I wouldn't be able to say I don't have a favorite. It's kind of whatever I'm working on currently has got my full attention and interest at that. But you've mentioned a couple of things in your answer to this that I want to kind of uh, go into in a little bit more detail. You said you yeah. did custom quilts. So mm -hmm. what did that involve? Did a, a client come to you and say, look, I'm looking for a, a quilt. I like these specific colors. I'd like this designer. How did that work? Yeah, so on Etsy, you can create listings and stuff, of course, but uh, people could message you on there. And I would just get messages saying, I want this size quilt. You know, and we would go from there. Basically, a lot of people didn't have any idea Kind of what they wanted because they just didn't know anything about quilting um a lot of the quilts that i made were memory quilts mm. so they would have a bag of um clothing from a deceased family member or um their child's baby clothes and stuff and we would kind of go from there um figuring out how much clothing or fabric they had to work with 
and then kind of the design that they would want. Um, but with memory quilts, it's like the the design's not what's important. It's the fabric that's being used and the sentimentality of the actual fabric. So, um, yeah, I did a lot of those. So now, are you still doing custom quilts? I am not. I haven't done that probably. I kind of quit uh, about when COVID hit. Mm. I think I've done a couple since then. Um, but once COVID hit, no one was ordering custom quilts. And then um, my work just kind of took me in a different direction. So I just took down that, that custom quilt listing and I haven't done any since. So I thought about getting back on and doing it, but I love doing the memory quilts, but they're, they're uh, very stressful to make because you're working with fabric that's so special to these people and if you do make a mistake there's no go running to the store and buying more you know right, right. a lot of pressure it's, on that yeah it is it is and i would say also probably a lot of time too um yes to do that now do you have another like a uh, a regular job as well or well so i freelance write Oh, okay. for a quilting blog <laughs> so my <laughs> whole life revolves around quilting at this point so yeah so, I started for them uh around when COVID started I because no money was coming in from the custom quilts so I got online and joined a freelancing site and quickly got that job and I've been writing for them ever since okay so um that's this is just opening up all kinds of other questions I have for you. So do you have like a, is it just a natural writing talent or did you have courses like a university degree or college or something in writing? Uh, no, I was very good at grammar, the grammar side of things all growing up through school. Um, and then I told the people when I when I uh, was interviewing for the job, I told them I have no writing experience, but I know a lot about quilting because it's been my obsession for years. <laughs> so um, they were like, OK, well, let's just try it and see. And I wrote a few um, trial blog posts for them and they really liked it. They they told me that I have uh, I'm very good at like kind of conversational writing. So. Yeah, and I've uh, been doing it since. They they tell me I'm doing a good job, so. And can I ask you who they are, if somebody wants to check it out? The website is called quiltdom.com. So it's quiltdom.com. Okay. And, uh, okay, so that's you. So how long have you been writing them? Um, For about three years now, I think. Oh, okay. So yeah doing this a long time and one question i didn't ask which is kind of off here onto the side is how long have you been quilting about seven seven eight years wow you've accomplished quite a bit in seven or eight years like i'm thinking custom quilts <laughs> writing a vlog what else do you do with quilts what else is related to all of that um well i started my own blog um about two years ago so I've been working on that and I started the YouTube channel <laughs> so well, that's busy. The, the YouTube channel I started in April and yeah it's just that uh glue basting video definitely helped it get bigger quicker yep. so. yes it, yes it did but you have other very good videos on your channel too and we'll come back to yep. that in a few minutes but i'm getting a little way off off from my questions and i don't want to lose track of some of these as well and the other thing that came to my mind when you were speaking here too is do you when you when you're making your quilts for yourself do you just go out and do your own kind of thing or do you are you more a pattern person i like to design whatever i'm making so if i um for when I was doing the custom quilts, I would follow some patterns because people would request a pattern. But for a lot of the memory quilts, I would design the quilts from scratch. 
And if I'm ever making something just for fun, I like to design it. I have um, the quilting software EQ8. Yes. And um, so I just go in there and I play around and design or I'll get a piece of notebook paper and just start drawing something up. So that's kind of, I enjoy that a lot more. There's so many gorgeous quilt patterns, but I don't know. It's just kind of in my head that if I'm going to be making something and spending that much time making something, I want it to be like completely from my brain, I guess. An original, an original, yeah. you'd yeah. say. So having said that, do you have, are you a pattern writer then? Like what I mean is if somebody saw one of your quilts, would you have a pattern for it? Or are you thinking about possibly getting into more formal pattern writing? I have, um, I'm actually about to release my first like paid for pattern pretty soon here. Um, I designed a free one on my site um, that quite a few people have downloaded and that's going well. But um, I have, I forgot, I have done some ghost writing for oh. quilt pattern. Oh, okay. So now that's interesting. <laughs> Tell me more. Ghost, I mean, I know what a ghost writer is, but ghostwriting for patterns I have never heard of such a thing yes so I have a friend who she designs beautiful quilt designs but she just didn't have the time or really know how to actually make the pattern so like write the instructions and make the little diagrams the little pictures in the pattern and things like that so I've done several of her pattern. So she comes up with the design and then I write all the instructions and that sort of thing. So, okay. yes. That's, that is very interesting because I never thought about someone being a ghostwriter for a pattern, but actually the way you've described it makes a lot of sense because I know for me, I like to design my own as well, but I don't like writing the pattern, uh, right. you know, kind of a thing. So mm -hmm. yeah, ghostwriter? not a bad idea in some in some ways i mean i think i could write a pattern but i to me it's not that like i want to be actually doing it not telling people how to do it kind of a thing right. Right. Mm -hmm. but that is that is quite an interesting avenue out there there might be a market for that kind of thing if, if it doesn't already oh, exist i've heard of i've heard of um people that that's their full-time job they just ghost write quilt patterns and there's some I don't I don't know who but I know there's some big names in the quilt pattern industry that they just have ghost writers write their patterns so okay. it's it's pretty cool it's yeah, very really. very interesting yeah that's an av <laughs> avenue in quilting I never really thought about before so let's then talk about what type of quilter you are this is another unfair question because I'm going to ask you to label yourself I'll give you some <laughs> some suggestions are you traditional are you modern are you free form are you experimental are you exploratory um i would say i'm a dabbler <laughs> okay like, that's one i didn't have on there but that makes sense <laughs> dabble and everything it's kind of i know i keep on going back to the custom quilts but that's kind of what i was doing for several years but with that I was making so many different types of quilts and doing so many different techniques and during that time I wasn't making any quilts for myself or exploring my own style in any way okay. um and then when I started writing for the quilting blog quilt them um you know I was doing things for that site that that was kind of the style that that they wanted me to write in so it's I've kind of just since really starting this YouTube channel <laughs> I've uh, I've been able to really start finding my own style and things I think I lean more towards I guess maybe a mixture of traditional and more modern I guess right. I love traditional quilt blocks they're just they're so timeless and you know it's it's really I really like to find a specific quilt block and then research it <laughs> and kind of find out like uh where it originally was came up with and you know 
So you basically have an interest in the history of quilting yes. as well, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I can understand that. I, I do, too. I'm always a little bit curious about where did these things come from and, you know, mm -hmm. what's the tradition behind them? Because every quilt tells a story. And, yep. you know, that's part of the story is the history of the quilt. So I am assuming that you are in your work area right now. So can you describe yeah. it for us? Is it a huge space, a small contained little closet? Uh, what have you got? <laughs> I am in the corner of my bedroom. <laughs> so I've got this white cabinet behind me and then I have a green cabinet and then I have another white cabinet over there. And then it's basically just a square. I've got a huge table. So it takes up my whole bedroom and then my bed is over in the corner, <laughs> basically. Well, it's great if you're having insomnia. I just hop up to your sewing machine and sew away uh, with it. So let's talk then about your uh what you have for sewing machine do you have more than one is my first question i technically do but i only use one well, yeah unless <laughs> you have four hands upgraded <laughs> right i've slowly upgraded but i can't get rid of my old ones <laughs> and what kind are they what what brand so i started with like the cheapest cheap singer sewing machine at the very beginning, it was like 75 bucks on Black Friday. Um, then I upgraded to another singer, which was like a sewing and quilting machine. And now I have a Juki, mm. which I've been, it's the Juki TL2010Q. Yep. It's, it's gained a lot of popularity in the quilting yep. community. But um, yeah, that's my workhorse my baby, I love it. <laughs> well, the reason I, I said you probably have more than one sewing machine is because I don't know anybody that's been into quilting for any length of time that doesn't have at least two or three oh, yeah. or four. You know, we collect them. It's like collecting mm -hmm. fabric. We collect machines all the time uh, with that. I know in my household right now, if you counted all the machines, there's at least eight on that. But <laughs> wow. not just for me. My husband sews as well, but he's a garment right. sewer and not a quilter. So between the two of us, we have, you name it, we've got it. We're all in, also into machine embroidery. So we have a couple of those as okay. well. So yeah, yeah. I, when I got it, like I haven't been quilting as long as you. I've only been quilting about five years and I didn't know I was a paper crafter. And okay. one day I saw a sewing machine, a cheapo sewing machine at Costco. And I thought, well, this would be good for some of the, the journals I make and things like that, you know. And yeah. uh, I found a thing online about putting a wall together, a wall hanging using your Cricut machine. Because I had a Cricut, you know, die yeah. cutting machine. And I made my first wall hanging on that. And I said, oh, I like this. So this is wow. quilting. Okay. Because I knew nothing. Nobody in my family quilted really. And mm -hmm. that's so. Yeah, same same as you, kind of a deal. And then I got hooked. And it yeah. went on from there. So, you know, you go down that <laughs> rabbit hole. So do you have a favorite tool? Something you can't live without that you'd reach for every time you're sitting at your sewing machine? Uh, Elmer's school glue. <laughs> yeah, you buy it by the gallon. I saw that video. <laughs> no, I really like that. Um really something that I really like to use is a Hira marker for mm -hmm. um marking doing because I like to do straight line quilting a lot right and just when I discovered the Hira marker I was just like this is awesome because before I was using like painter's tape yeah and putting long huge strips of tape on the quilt and that just made the quilt stiff and awkward and it was time consuming. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, the here marker, really, I love that. I love that thing. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have one of those, but I have never really used it that much. I, I probably should. I could go back and revisit my tools. Yeah, really, because, you know, you're kind of making me think about this a little bit as well. <laughs> so um, what is it going to say then about your tools and things? Oh, do you have a technique? that you really like to use, like, you know, flying geese or half square triangles or or flip and fold or whatever they call those things? Um, I don't know. It's just the, the next thing that I learn about, I guess, is the fun, fun new thing to try. 
I like making, uh, I guess I like making eight at a time half square triangles. That's mm -hmm. a huge time saver because, you know, for the first couple of years, I was making individual half square triangles and wasting so much fabric. I have like bags full of little triangles that are from other quilts, but now I know you can make eight at a time and there's no waste. So that is actually... When, yeah, that, that's a great technique. Mm -hmm. I agree with you on that one. So let's, there's two things that have come out of this part of what we've been questioning that I want to ask you a little bit more. You say you have huge bags of scraps. What do you do with your scraps? Um, I use them for, well, I, I have been using them for different tutorials and things for my writing and for videos. Um, and, uh, I've also used them to stuff something. I've made like a pillow or something and used them along with stuffing to kind of right. yeah. fill it, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, and, and they uh they're also just uh, taking up space. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're are you into the idea of being uh doing scrap quilts? Have you done scrap quilts? I have not, but I love the idea of it. Um yeah, it's just I've I've been really intrigued and kind of researching collage quilting mm. lately. And I know scraps would be really good for that. Um, so it's just something that I just need to take the time and just dive in and try something, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Because I, I would think because you're very creative and you don't necessarily follow a pattern per se, and I think I think you'd probably enjoy scrap quilting maybe because you do your own design kind of a deal i i do too i like to do scrap quilts every now and then i call them kind of a palette cleaner between major projects yeah. that i've done you know just there's something therapeutic about grabbing a bunch of random pieces of fabric and just sewing them together and seeing mm -hmm. what you come up with you know and yeah i have yet to see one of the scrap quilts i've made that i i hate i never hated one of them in fact some of my favorite quilts we're back on that a little bit are my scrap yeah. quilts you know or orphan okay. block quilts i love to, i save all my orphan blocks and when i get enough of them and i get in the mood dump them out with my scraps Let's just start sewing them all together i don't worry about color i don't worry about placement you know size i don't worry about that and some of those are my favorite quilts out of it because <laughs> that they're a mystery quilt in a sense the mystery is i don't know what it's going to look like until it's done so right so if you, oh, the other question I want to ask you right now too, is so you're talking, when you quilt your quilts, I'm assuming you're doing it on your Juki on a domestic machine. Yes. Yep. And so you said you did a lot of straight line quilting. Do you get in, do you do any like free motion, meandering stuff like that as well? I do, yeah. Yep. I've dabbled. You dabbled. <laughs> you dabbled. Yeah. Well, that's how we so, learn. Yeah. There's a few there's a few designs that I like to do. So I'll do like a loopy kind of design. And there's one that's more, it's like a meander, but it's like little boxes. Oh, yeah. I know. So that was, that was the first free motion quilting design I learned and tried. And I really like that one. That one's really fun. And it gives the quilt a really cool texture. Yeah. So yeah. do you have, do you have your Juki then? on uh like do you have a big table like is your juki set into a table so you have lots of space to the left of your machine and in front of the machine to spread your quilt out when you're quilting it it's not set into the table but i do have a large table it's like uh i'm not very good at guesstimating it's about 30 no this is more than 36 inches i'd say like 40 by 60 table okay so so you can just lay it all out and because that's really the big, big problem I found when I was doing domestic machine quilting is the drag, you know, on the, uh -huh. on the quilt because they're heavy suckers, as yeah. we all know, you know, and it, it just it you're sore after you've yes. done it quilt that you are sore from it. So anything oh that makes it easier. Yes, yeah. like here. Yes. You get a workout for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Your shoulders, your neck hurts the whole bit. Yeah, I know. People are always talking about, well, you need to get up every so often and stretch and, you know, make it. Yeah. Once you're in the when you're in the zone, you're not thinking about stretching. You're thinking about <laughs> so getting your true. stitches in there. 
that's yeah and then so you if you have it's like Aw. yeah yeah you, then you feel like an old person at that point yeah, yeah. uh even if you are one which i am but now we'll look. Your, oh don't don't bother i'm not looking for a compliment okay <laughs> okay all I want to say is moisturizer at an early age is your best friend. So uh, <laughs> anyways, how do we get on that topic? If you had all the money in the world, is there a piece of equipment you would want to invest in? Oh, yes. I would love to have a long arm. Well, okay. If I had all the money and the space, <laughs> yes. a long arm, a long arm I, that would be so much fun to play with. I haven't even tried one before. But yeah, I'm I'm very jealous of you. When you said you had a long arm, I was like, oh, well, must be nice. <laughs> it is it is nice, but there's a learning curve. Believe me. Oh yeah. And, you know, beyond the expanse, and then finding a place you can put it. And I was lucky in both cases that I was able to afford it, and I was able to find a space for it. Um, but then it's it's a learning curve to you know with it because is yours computerized i do have it computerized because i'll let you okay. in a little secret which is not really a secret i hate doing free motion quilting you know i just i <gasps> suck at it well <laughs> i mean i shouldn't say i'd hate it but i need the time to practice and in the time that i'm pra i'm an impatient person with the time i'm practicing i could be putting together to put put another quilt together i could be sewing something i love to piece mm -hmm. um so i did buy the the computer and there's a lear another learn level of learning curve on that too but i have to say i do not regret a cent that i spent on this machine i love it i absolutely love it i do not have any quilt tops that have not been finished since i've had that machine right. uh with it so yeah well i'm lying i have one laying there waiting to be put on i call her lucy because her name is actually Lucy because she's an APQS machine and they name them okay, for yes. you. But uh, it's sitting there waiting patiently later this week, it'll go on and I'll get that set up. But yeah, but they are a, a glorious machine just in the, you can throw away your glue when you yeah. <laughs> yeah, with, with that. Yep. Because they're wonderful when it comes to basting a quilt, laying it all out. Oh, it's so nice. But anyways, uh, enough about that. I'll make you drool. And, you know, <laughs> quick, don't walk, run, buy, buy a long arm. You should try one, though. You should, like, before you ever, yeah. if when you get into a state where you're really thinking seriously about getting one, go and try them. Try several different models because they're mm -hmm. like, you have, they have to say they want to come home with you you know kind of a thing it's like adopting right. a pet you know you mm -hmm. look around you see them in the rescue and the whole bit but there's that one that you know that's the one it's the same with the long arms because it's going to be a personal experience believe me once you get one um yeah. okay so have you ever belonged to any uh online or in-person groups like guilds or anything like that and how did that work out for you if you did i have not um I would like to join one, but I'm, I, I am very shy <laughs> in person. And, um, I actually met a lady before and she invited me to their guild. I actually bumped into her a couple of times and she invited me, but I, it was just very intimidating to think to go show up at a room full of people that I don't know that are, you know, they are a little older mm -hmm. and I would, the young probably looked at an experienced person in there and I just it was very a very intimidating thought for me so I haven't yet but I I would like to someday yeah there the guild thing I did belong to one for a while I don't right now and I'll be honest about it it was not the best experience for me but that's not to say that all guilds are like that that you have to shop around if you have the ability in your area to do that but right. i i love being on with groups on online and that all came out of covid you know like did right. anyone know about zoom before 2019 2020 <laughs> no that's for sure now look at us you know i mean i belong to several groups i run so days and things through zoom all the time and i absolutely love it i've made a lot of great friends there very supportive people online and guilds in-person guilds are 
can be like that as well. You just have to shop around, find the best fit. Unfortunately, the one that I went to, which was the only one in my immediate area, they were a whole bunch of old biddies who, yeah. you know. And then like you know, a man being there. <laughs> yeah, I was the only man, a hundred women, one man. Wow. And they, well, I'm not getting into all of that. I think I have a video about it but on my YouTube yeah. channel somewhere. But let's just say I much prefer this kind of environment over the other and believe it or not i tend to be a little shy too but no one would ever believe that of me i know they don't but inside i feel like there's a shy person there's a yeah. an extrovert on the outside though that keeps him contained so i don't know there you go. <laughs> yeah whatever but uh okay so how about now you you kind of live in a rural area i take it so mm -hmm. do you have access to you know a variety of of shops you can go to or do you do a lot of buying of your fabric and equipment online i do have access it's just a long drive mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so i i about? actually i live about an hour and a half away from the missouri star quilt company mm -hmm town okay yeah and they're taking over a downtown yeah. area bunch of shops it's, it's it's very cool but um so i've gone there several times but yeah i do do a lot of my fabric shopping online i would prefer not to why is that i like to actually see the colors in person you know how many times have we bought stuff online and you get it and you realize the color is way off. It does not match the other fabric that I purchased. So, um, but yeah, I do I do buy quite a bit of fabric on online and I always buy stuff on sale. I never pay full price for anything. So and I just shop around for good deals and yeah. That's that's what I have found. Quilters for the most part are how do you put it mildly? We're cheap. Oh yeah. <laughs> or thrifty. Yeah. That's but we're thrifty. You know. have to be. Yes. Because clothing can be so expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it just in the last year, year and a half, it's gone out the roof. And you're lucky. You live in the States. Your fabric prices compared to ours in Canada are yeah. much more inexpensive. Mm. I mean, I know you probably don't feel that way about it, but in Canada, it is. The problem is, if we order from the States, we have to pay the exchange rate on the dollar and yeah. the shipping, and that kills us. But I also am very envious that even if it is an hour and a half away, you're still closer to Missouri Star than I am. I have never been there. It's a destination. Someday oh. I will get there. And when I yes. get there, they'll know I'm coming because they'll you'll be hearing every, this sound. Ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. <laughs> So I'll take a big bag of money with me and which in the form of my credit card and uh, going nuts. I'm going to get there one day, one day. So, but oh, I, 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 I agree with you. The online shopping, it depends. Um, I, I do a lot <laughs> online. Some people say they don't like to do online shopping, not just for the color. Oh, you got a guest. <laughs> Sorry, she was being so good. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. I like <laughs> I like animals. That's fine. Um, I was going to say that I like to feel the fabric as well. You know, yes. yep. you know, there's mm -hmm. nothing more exciting than going to a quilt store, coming home, throwing on the floor all your bolts of fabric that you bought, and rolling naked in them. But enough about my pastime. <laughs> <laughs> enough about that kind of thing i think that's way too much information but yeah i like to i like to feel the fabric but i've had good luck online for the most part but i have had a few where the color was oh that's not what i was expecting so mm -hmm. yeah so um do you have any favorite now you said that basically you went to youtube when you first got started which i think all of us do to find out yeah. everything about everything is on youtube so do you, do you have any favorite experts or people's YouTube channels or something that you go to when you're looking for information about a technique or some inspiration? Yeah, so I, of course, go to Jenny Doan. Mm. She's got tutorials on pretty much everything. Um, and I also, a lot of times, go to actually a blog I don't know if she has a YouTube channel, but I, I don't know if you've heard of Susie Quilts. Yes, I have, but I've never explored her. 
Okay. So she does a lot of more modern quilt patterns and stuff, but she does a lot of really good tutorials. So I go to her blog a lot. I learned a lot from her at the beginning when I first started. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I really enjoy her and um, she's very funny in her writing. So I like that. I like humor and stuff. So, but in a lot of times I try to figure something out first myself but then if I can't figure it out then I'll go hunting online for how to do it so I I think I've watched several Pat Sloan videos yeah I'm really bad at remembering names <laughs> yeah I, I'm kind of the same way with that too but like you um I like to try something out first and then if I get stuck or whatever or if I think there's a better way to do this I'll start doing the search for the experts but you know I don't read manuals you know, manuals are on a need to know basis. You know, you give me a new machine. I'm just right in there pushing all the buttons to see what they do. <laughs> Maybe not the best way to approach some high, higher tech items, but, uh, right. you know, it's fun <laughs> to, to play. So let's talk about your YouTube channel. Now, you said that you just got it started, what, in April? At the end of April. Yep. And what was, why did you want to do a YouTube channel? Well, <laughs> I, I really, I mean, when you go on YouTube and look up quilting stuff, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot, there are some, but there's not a lot of people my age doing it. Very true. And, and I have found that a lot of people that are teaching specifically, I like the teaching aspect of it. The people that are teaching, it's, it's kind of a little boring i'm not trying to mean at all but you know but I what I, you mean. if if you're wanting to learn something it's fun to learn from someone that you know is excited about it and you know is breaking it down into little minuscule steps so you understand what to do because as a beginner that's what you need i'm not going to assume that you know everything that i know when i'm teaching you something so that's kind of that's why I wanted to start it, but I was putting off starting it for a very long time. And then, you know, my family just really encouraged me. They're like, Miriam, just do it. Do it. My dad was like, what's the worst thing that could happen? <laughs> exactly. You don't know until you know, just try it. Yep. So. Nice. Yep. That's so, what, I uh, what uh, for someone who's coming to your channel for the very first time, what can they expect to find? a lot of beginner friendly tutorials i like i said i like to break things down step by step and you know i i want it to kind of feel like you're just sitting sewing with a friend you're just chit chatting making something together um that's really my goal and i never want people to feel like they're stupid <laughs> <laughs> or you know like you should just know this or and uh, something that I've stressed several times in videos is there's not just one way to do something. And there, there's no, if you figure out a different way to do something, there's no judgment. If you're not doing it the way that I do it, that's fine. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's kind of what I try to push when I'm yeah. teaching. It's like, it's okay if you don't do it the same way that I do it. Yep. And you know that you, there are so many tutorial videos out there that, okay, they say, okay, today we're going to do half square triangle. So you take your two pieces of fabric, suddenly there's a cut and the half square triangle is done. Wait, wait, I missed something here. What, 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 what's this supposed to be? Or you can't see what they're doing, you know, like because their camera is in the right position or their hands are over top of it. And I find those very frustrating, you know, I'm coming mm -hmm. to them because I want to learn. And the little chunks, like you say, breaking it all down into little steps, I think that's a great thing to do. Even for people who may already know what they're doing, I think it's very helpful to see it, you know, step by step. I mean, they can mm -hmm. fast forward it you know, if they need to right. they think they're that bored with it or whatever. But, um, but one of the things too, that I liked about your video when you were doing the glue basting was your cat. 
<laughs> I loved your cat on the quilt. I used to have a cat. My cat has passed away a long time ago now, and I oh. miss her very much. But yeah. I mean, I wasn't quilting when I had my cat, but I knew she'd be just like that. If mm -hmm. I, and I think that is like, that creates a video that's very personable. I love to see people's pets in their videos because I love animals yeah. too. But that cat was the, the star of the show. I'm sorry, you're teaching something about blue <laughs> basting, but your cat had my full attention. So, oh yeah. <laughs> She knows it too. She's yeah. she's a diva. But oh, yeah. yeah, you can't believe how many comments I've gotten on that video saying my cat does the same thing yeah. or you know, it's 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 fun. Well, you know, <laughs> it, it also helps though because it makes your your channel, your videos relatable. And I think that's right. an important key in YouTube, you know, so people really feel that you're talking to them and mm -hmm. you're talking not down to them you're you're at, or at them you're talking with them and so i and i find that's the atmosphere that comes across in your videos and that probably comes from your background as a, a blog writer as well mm -hmm. uh with that so what are your future plans for your youtube channel uh, have, for in terms of you know where what direction do you want to see it go do you it might be an unfair <laughs> question <laughs> <laughs> keep doing what I'm doing, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I've got several quilt patterns that I want to write and release and do videos on, you know, keep doing tutorials. I think it would be really fun to kind of, kind of what you do with your community. You do like little sew alongs and things. I think that would be really fun to do. Um, so yeah, just keep chugging along and, and yeah. see see what happens basically it's all new to me yep it's and like i'm learning something new every video that i'm doing and stuff so and i have found over time too you your youtube channel style and that starts to evolve and you get ideas and it it goes it goes from there it just it will grow as time goes <laughs> on as you get more comfortable in this uh form of media um it will it will grow so how about any challenges or goals for yourself in the future in terms of quilting? Do you have any? <laughs> well, I did mention I want to try collage quilting. Mm -hmm. I went to my first quilt show this past summer and I saw these gorgeous collage quilts and I was just like, I need to try some. Obviously, it's not going to look as amazing as those that were on the wall, but I just, I just got like a light bulb went off and I was like oh that looks so fun and like uh thread painting and stuff that would be really fun to attempt I don't know if I can do it but I'll try it give it a and shot I, I also really want to learn how to hand quilt because mm -hmm. I I love the look of it and it look seems very um therapeutic yeah so I, I would like to learn how to do that you know just for myself it's not necessarily going to be you know videos and content stuff about it I would just like to learn that because for yourself, yeah. Like, uh, mm -hmm. That's true. Well, I think those are all very attainable goals, uh, you know. And yeah, like you said, just try it. What's the worst mm -hmm. thing that can happen? So that brings me to my last question: Do you have any advice for anyone who wants to get started into doing this art form, quilting? Yeah, I would say just go for it, and you know. It doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. It really doesn't. And that's uh, that's something that I kind of had to learn for myself because when I was learning seven or eight years ago, a lot of the teachers online and stuff were, you know, you must do it this way. Or, you know, if it's not done this way, it's wrong. And that is not true. And I really want people to understand that, that quilting is art yes it is what other what other art form is there that you know people are like this is the only way that you can do this and if you don't do it this way it's wrong you know there isn't yes so, they say um, there aren't they say there isn't any such thing as quilt police but there are com quilt <laughs> police individuals out there you know like and yeah forget about them the only opinion that matters is yourself your own opinion really it's your exactly. creation if you love it 
It doesn't matter whether it's perfect and whether you followed the rules or not. If you love it, that's all that matters. Exactly. Okay, so this has been great. Do you have any final words uh, before we say goodbye? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just, this was so much fun. And it was a, a I really appreciate you messaging me and and uh, inviting me on to here it was this has been really fun to talk to someone that kind of has the same ideas as I do with quilting and and enjoying the art form for what it is and not being super picky about it and it's just been this has been super fun for me for sure well, that's great I am so glad that you've enjoyed this I definitely have enjoyed it as well and I have found some of the things that you've been telling me very inspiring uh, as well. So that's great. And I will be watching your videos to see what you come up with next. Do have the Diva Cat play a role too, because I love the Diva oh, Cat yeah. in there for sure. So <laughs> I'm going to say goodbye, just stay on the line. But as I say goodbye, but thank you again for this. It was wonderful. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and your journey with this with quilting. So thanks again, Miriam. Thank you.